back off and he'll go straight over the face of Lee. Uh, yeah. He's slid underneath the neck here. This is big. Wow. He passes the side control. Oh, 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 he's going. He's just letting it. I was just like, this is it. This is it. On every one, like, however many submissions in a row. Yeah, and that last one, just like, fair play to dab. It's not tapping. He's a really tough lad. Okay, so initially I went hand through onto the bicep here, trying to grab as much of the back of the tricep here. And then I pulled up to pull up his shoulder and pull into my hip here. So I've got his elbow engaged into my hip here. Now I punch deep with my elbow. So the, the crevice of my elbow comes onto the wrist here. And then I touch the back of my neck. From here, as I went for the break, he then bridged up slightly in which I crossed my feet under the shoulder to stop the the kip, uh, sorry the hitchhiker escape. So from here, now I can align myself and get to here. This is where I should have basically dabbed him up and then grabbed the wrist here. And then I should have brought this foot through to this shoulder, turned to my side and put my foot underneath his head and turned the angle here. So this way, because from here, his shoulder is high, right? So his shoulder is in alignment with his wrist. So that way he's taking a lot of pressure off his elbow. What I should have done is brought my foot over and then come underneath his head here and then brought that shoulder down. Then from here, what I should have done also is break the elbow over my hip. I got a bit too zealous where I saw the clock and it was, a, it was getting to time and I just wanted to get the break. But what I should have done is break it over my hip, right? So now from here, I can push it over my hip and I get the tap. He's switching towards the back. That looks so oh tight. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. He's putting everything into it. That is so tight. So what happened in the match was that his arm was quite high and I was trying to get the back of my head uh, to his arm and I should have been able to drag it back down or looking to get, uh, drag it back down. What I should have done is I should have came off. So originally I'd do stuff like this and then try and get the squeeze, but should have pumped it a bit more, a bit lower, and then bring the back of my head while pulling in. So I should have been ear to ear with him, and then pulling in here, and then bringing myself down for that tap. So from the head and arm, you could see in the match, I was doing stuff with his leg here. I was just, I basically wanted him to move. So as he moves away from me, that's when I can cinch up this fast here. So sometimes I'll get the tap from it, which I can get here, okay? And then other times when it's just not working for me, I can use it as an opportunity to start taking the back. If you're not doing like an RNC, it's where my hand is going downwards and I'm putting my hand on my forearm here. So it's quite a, uh, a, a tight strangle actually, if you can get it. So here, if he then turns away from me with the head and arm, yeah, and he gets to his side, when he's perfectly on his side, this is the perfect opportunity to go for that fast here. And then from here, you can start Cinching it up. Doesn't quite have it. And again, looking the lock off. And he'll go straight over the face if needed. Uh, yeah. It slid underneath the neck here. Yeah, okay, so for the RNC, this is like a very like last stitch attempt, right? If I can get my chin down into the pocket, there's like a little pocket down here in his arm of the RNC, right? If I can get my chin down there, it will alleviate pressure from my artery here. You have two arteries in your neck, and that will alleviate pressure from one. So I won't pass out if I've still got one available. So here and here. And I was pretty much pinching my, my chin down and here. And he couldn't he couldn't really finish it. And that's why he let go. Shall I try squeezing? Yeah, go on. I'm trying. <laughs> and <I'd... sighs> no. And I'm still trying to fight, obviously. I'm not just like letting him be here. I'm still trying to like push up the arm maybe and whatnot and trying to get out. But basically my chin wants to go into this like little gap here. And that way I can start to still stay in the game. Okay, so I was hunting for the back escape the whole time, but uh, Davis was doing a really good job at keeping my back. So the one, the final attempt, uh, on the final attempts for me to get out the back, I basically cover this hand onto the bottom of this elbow and pinch so I can protect myself. And that one, I come up onto my elbow. So I start to gain height, right? So then my foot, comes out into onto his ankle here and I push away. From here, I was digging for the bottom of his foot to get rid of it and then start to come up into my body locks. 
Yeah, so the whole time when I was defending the back, um, obviously Davis is a great opponent, very strong, athletic, right? But I did feel like he was using a lot more energy expenditure than I was, right? And that's an important factor in a match because I'm always looking at how much energy am I really using on certain techniques throughout the whole match. Um, at that point, when I got out, I felt like I did have the energy upper hand, right? So, and also when you're in a match, it's never over until the time's done, right? Don't ever give up, just keep going. Uh, that's uh, literally my thought process, right? If you ever played any video games, you're still on one HP, you can still survive and still win the game, right? Uh, no, I have no regrets and I don't feel like I rushed it at all. The, the crowd really amped me up. I feel like when I come out into such a, a big stadium, it doesn't matter the number, it always amps me up. So I don't, I don't get crushed under pressure. No, I feel like I'd rather shine. I was losing my shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being in the corner was wild. And like, yeah, the whole kind of environment in the arena afterwards was, uh, during it, like three minutes of cheering constantly. And then just the, the electricity after was, uh, I think, really quite special. George, like, taking the microphone at the end going, hey. was, was, was the moment for me. I loved that. Really, I mean, when you're on George's back, you don't really feel like you're in control of the match. Um, no, I wasn't surprised to see what he did. Like, he's got so much heart and belief and, uh, and his technique backs up too. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, no surprises there for me.